Extra dimensions have been somewhat of a hot topic in physics since the creation of string theory, an attempt to unify the four fundamental forces of nature into a single mathematical and conceptual framework. String theory is not without its problems, however, and it's certainly not without its critics. But string theory is arguably our most promising candidate for what physicists call a grand unified theory. Now, the idea that space may contain additional dimensions is in fact quite old. In fact, in 1921, the German mathematician Theodor Kaluza published a remarkable paper proposing that there may in fact be four spatial dimensions and just one of time, and that we existed within a five-dimensional universe. Kaluza had realized that when he extended Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity to allow for one additional spatial dimension, that the equations not only explained gravity, but also the theory of electromagnetics. He had ostensibly succeeded in unifying the general theory of relativity with electromagnetism. The theory did have some of its own problems, however. Uh, for example, a byproduct of the extra dimensions was the prediction of an additional and unobserved field. Now, the lack of evidence for this field and the rather glaring observation that we exist in three and not four spatial dimensions dealt somewhat of a blow to Kaluza's new theory. However, just a few short years later, the Swedish physicist Oscar Klein proposed an idea that helped Kaluza justify his proposal of an additional spatial dimension. Klein suggested that this dimension was in fact compactified. In short, that it was very, very small and it took the shape of a circle. And only at incredibly high energies would it make its existence apparent to us. Klein's idea is an essential and critical component to string theory and imp theory, and extra dimensions are a common research theme for graduate students and for professors at academic institutions across the planet. But what role do extra dimensions play in the creation of an exotic superluminal propulsion system? And how does this all tie in with the Casimir effect and with dark energy? Well, we'll find out in just the next webisode.